Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 5. Today we're going to be talking about some major new updates as to the next season, because we've got an official episode count that is different from the one as previously reported earlier this week. You know I made a video on that earlier in the week, so I have to update you guys. Also, we're going to be going over some other theories in regards to what's going to be happening potentially next season on Supergirl, so if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos over the summer. Okay, so previously reported this week was that Supergirl Season 5 would be dropping down to 20 episodes. This was reported by Spoiler TV, but over the last few days, we were able to get confirmation from David on Twitter, and I'll leave his link in the description below. I really have trouble saying his surname. But he works on the Flash set and he is familiar with a lot of the scheduling for the other shows because, you know, they all work around similar schedules. And he confirmed to us that, yeah, Supergo is going to be not having 20 episodes, but what he's been told is they're going to have 22 episodes, unlike what Spoiler TV actually was reporting earlier in the week. So he confirmed it and just, I think it was yesterday maybe or the day before, Spoiler TV updated their episode count for Supergirl Season 5 from 20 to 22. So we are officially back at the same run count as The Flash and the same as Season 4. So that is incredibly exciting in my opinion that we're not dropping down. We've got 22 episodes. We can continue running throughout the whole year. We had 22 this season. The Flash had 22 this season. And it made a lot of sense that it would stay at 22 rather than dropping down to 20 because there is no real reason for that unless Melissa needed more time to do Broadway next year or something like that but she has the time to do a Broadway run. I was sort of fine with 20 but was a little bit bummed out because I do like the long episode run counts and I know people when looking at the Batwoman run count when it says 13 and Legends is 15 they sort of equate that for quality like quality over quantity but I think for these shows it actually really benefits to expand the story in a long format longer than 15 episodes because I think Legends is way too short the scheduling throughout the year is a complete mess for Legends and hopefully Batwoman doesn't fall into that sort of area because last year Legends went off for a very long time and we had it come back and barely anyone remembered what the story was because it was gone for so long and there were so many episodes that literally could have built on story and they just really didn't have a story last season. So I feel like for the TV shows, for the DC shows, because there is so much depth in the story, so much to explore when there's actually a really good story like The Flash had last season and Supergirl eventually got to when we got to Lex and Red Daughter, there is a lot to explore and I think, you know, going week to week being like, yes, there's another Supergirl episode or there's another Flash episode, that excites you and I feel like this season, I've got a really good feeling about this season of Supergirl as well as The Flash. So, very, very excited. It's back to 22. So, that was falsely reported earlier this week and this is just to tell you guys that weren't aware and you saw perhaps my video and you were like, oh, shit why is it on 20 episodes not 22 well here is the correction we're on 22 the same as the flash for supergirl season 5 okay so that is my main part of the video but let's move on to the theory so i asked you the other day and i've been asking you guys on twitter but also the community tab to leave suggestions and ideas you want me to explore in some videos so when you know the main topic doesn't take up a full length video because, you know, we talked about the episode count the other day. I sort of like to include these theories because they're very intriguing. And so the first question, so I've got like five questions we're going to go over. So the first one was, do you think Brainiac will show up on the show? So Brainiac is the reason why mon -El and Wynn actually went back to the future with the Legion. And that's who they are fighting in the future. So will he appear on the show? I don't think he will appear in the flesh. As on the show Krypton right now, which I really love, I'm going to be making videos starting next week when it comes back for season 2. 
they've actually got Brainiac, so I don't think they're going to have him on Supergirl and Krypton at the same time. Obviously, maybe after Krypton Season 2 is done, maybe they bring in Brainiac, but I think the only way you bring in Brainiac is if you bring mon back or you bring Wim back and you somehow combine it with their return because that was the whole reason they went to the future. So I don't see him returning just without Win or mon or, you know, Imra, but Imra's not going to appear because Amy Jackson's pregnant and she's going to have to care for her daughter or son throughout, you know, the next few years or so. So that won't happen. So my answer to the question is, yeah, maybe, but only really if the Legion are brought back into it. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Will we see any more iconic Superman villains such as Brainiac, Zod, etc. since we got Lex Luthor this season? So that's a good question and if I'm being honest, I don't want more Superman villains. I want Supergirl villains and I want villains that are actually not being explored that much before because, you know, the idea of doing, say, Zoom on the Flash was so intriguing. Or Reverse Flash because we haven't had that in live action, but we've had so many iterations of Zod and Brainiac. I feel like, no, we don't need it. And with Lex, that was my very same feeling. I was like, no, we don't need Lex on Supergirl. I was really against the idea, and they proved me wrong. He was really good. And we've seen Zod, a version of Zod, all the way back in the season 2 finale. It was just a vision, but, you know, it was him, and it would be the actor that they would use unless they were recasting. So, no, I don't see any Superman villains coming very soon, I think. Obviously, next season is going to be not even a Supergirl villain, it's more of a Batman villain that they're going to adapt for Supergirl. But, I think, stick with the Supergirl villains come up with a really interesting idea, a really interesting story, more so, like what we got with Rain, because Rain obviously wasn't that much of a big villain, like in the comics, she was in a run, but she didn't really do much else apart from that, but they really were able to expand upon that, and I feel like using a Superman villain as like a main villain for the whole season, I don't know, not a, not the biggest fan of that, so I don't really see them bringing in Brainiac, although like I said, if they bring back the Legion, maybe Brainiac comes in and I'll be cool with that, but I don't want Zod. I really don't like Zod. Zod's like one of my least favourite villains in the entire DC universe, you know, in the comics, but also in the films and TV shows. Not a fan of him. Okay, so maybe some theories for Alex being given a really cool storyline this season that makes her more than just the relationship she's going to have with Kelly. So the questions obviously about is she gonna have any other storylines and the main thing is a lot of the side characters will have one story for the season and that's the main thing so I don't feel like Alex is going to have much of a big part of a story that's not to do with you know the main villain and the main overarching story of the whole season that is not her relationship with Kelly because I feel like the Kelly and Alex stuff is going to be a main focus Maybe Alex will eventually be able to adopt a kid. Maybe that happens. I really do hope it happens. So I'm not sure. I don't think there's gonna be much else for Alex apart from the main story and her relationship with Kelly and perhaps the adoption storyline so I would like more but yeah, I don't think it's gonna happen Okay, so the last thing someone asks no love for sci-fi's Krypton. Yes, there is love right here. I really, really like season one. And the reason why I'm bringing this up in a Supergirl video is obviously you guys, I think you will like it if you haven't watched season one. It was really, really good. I made a few videos. I was actually away for a large chunk of it. So that's why I didn't have videos like every single episode, but I tried to do it. I did it for the finale as well and leading up to season one. So season two comes out next week, I do believe. And I will be making videos for that if it's really good like it was in season one. So please be on the lookout for that. And the final question that I'm going to be going over is does Supergirl have Red Daughter's powers? So this is something that I've been getting, you know, especially on my review and my last few videos about the finale. Will she have Red Daughter's powers? So that was the notable difference in the finale when Red Daughter absorbed into Supergirl. She had purple you know 
heat vision and she was able to use those special powers that Red Daughter was said to have evolved, you know, because of the Hara now. That's what we can infer. So with her back in her, no, I don't think that she's going to have those powers. I think that was temporary with her just joining, you know, with Red Daughter to Supergirl. So no, I don't think next season we're going to see any of that. It will just be back to normal powers and that was just temporary. That's what I sort of can take out of the finale. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did like it, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Also, the GoFundMe page for helping me get to San Diego Comic Con. Any contributions is really, really appreciated. And I want to say a massive thank you to all of you who have supported me. We've got up to about £350, which is absolutely insane that you guys are actually supporting me trying to get to Comic Con. And this is my final few videos that I'm going to be mentioning it because I'm going to be closing down the page and we're going to be booking to actually go to Comic Con in the next few days. So last chance to help contribute, everyone that helps contributing towards my travels to San Diego and obviously at the event, you're going to be entered into winning a San Diego Comic Con exclusive Funko Pop figure and I'm going to be buying like a range of them and I will send it out to multiple different people so there's about I don't know 25 or 30 of you that have contributed so far so all of you are currently in the running and anyone else who wants to do it via if I do a live stream which I do plan to do I think tomorrow if I do get time you can do it via Super Chat, you can do it via Patreon or you can do it via GoFundMe which is only available for the next few days so thank you all for your support recently and just keep watching the videos keep coming back every day leaving a like it really means the most to me so thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys later goodbye